Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday to you from wherever you're joining us. If you are looking for the active citizen with Minecraft education co-taught lesson, you're in the right place. Welcome to everyone. So introducing um, the team for today, I will start by introducing you to the fabulous Mary Walker Hope. I will go ahead, let you introduce where you're coming from, and then I'll share who I am. Oh, that's great. Thanks so much, Tammy. I'm, I'm Mary Walker Hope. I actually am living in Brighton, Ontario. So I, uh, um, yeah, right down on Lake Ontario. It's a lovely place to live. Uh, we're part of the Williams Treaty of 1923, and I identify as she and her. And my name is Tammy Brewster. I'm on unceded territory that is now colonized as Montreal, and my pronouns are she, her. It's really likely that you're participating in learning from or near the territorial land of one of the many Indigenous groups across Canada. I want to acknowledge today that I'm presenting from the territory of the local people of the 1923 Williams Treaty. That's the Anishinaabewaki, the Mississauga, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people. And I'm really, really fortunate to be able to enjoy and share with you from these lands and the waters of this region. We live in a beautiful, beautiful country. So if you haven't taken a look already, you can discover all kinds more about your area where you're living if you go to native slash land.ca. And a special shout out and a huge thank you to Microsoft in Education, um, global training partner for making these workshops and these co-taught lessons um, available to all of you who are joining us. So huge shout out to thank you and thank you to Microsoft and Microsoft Education Edition, um, who is a global training partner. I know my students love um, Microsoft Education Edition. So special shout out to Microsoft. Thank you so much for making um, all of this great learning happen. Absolutely. And oh, it's, it's, it's crazy, but cool. You can see and hear us. Well, at least we hope you can, but we can't hear and see you. Well, not the traditional way you think of. Um, we are going to put you in a, and hopefully if you haven't done it before, this is brand new. If you've done it before, you're like, hey, I got you. Um, so here's how you go about finding us and communicating with us for our time together today. So we're going to ask you or the, the lead learner teacher in your room, go to a new tab and type in the cc.page forward slash Minecraft it's going to bring you to a form. And we want you, first of all, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back, be <laughs> safe on the form. We only want um, your, the grown up in your room, the lead learner in your room to be, to be using that, or maybe it's you. Please don't let us know. Um, we wanna know your name, but don't use your school name and answer the questions as they come along, okay? So protect yourself while being online and just share your name, share your class's name. Um, no, I don't think we want your school. Um, we want you to be safe. So please go ahead, go over there to the cc.page forward slash Minecraft. And now Mary's gonna launch us into um, our first question and make sure you can jump into the form. Let's That's go. Great. Absolutely, Tammy. That's great. Well, and as Tammy said, we just need your first name just so that we can do some shout outs for you. But don't worry about putting on last names. We don't need to see those at all. Um, the question that we have, and I, it may sound simple, but there's a lot to this question. So why do you think that the Nobel Peace Prize was created? Why do you think it was ever invented in the first place? And it's really, it's, it's amazing how this works because um, it could be very, very simple. Somebody might come up with an answer that's incredibly simple for a certain reason, but there's also all kinds of things that happened with Alfred Nobel when he was creating this, that um, there's all kinds of theories of why the Nobel Peace Prize was invented, why it was created. Mm, I'm very curious to see what questions we get in. Um, and as people make their way over to the cc.page forward slash Minecraft to get to that form and get those answers into us, um, I'm super curious. So, and also to all of the classes, if for whatever reason, something we're going too fast or you're unsure or you hit those tech glitches, guess what? Pause us. Pause us will still be there um, when you want to pause and come back to us, okay? So know that um, if you need to pause us for any reason, we uh, will be with you. We'll jump back on with you. 
So just Absolutely. waiting for some people to get into the form. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm, uh, you know what, Tammy, do you know anything about the Nobel Peace Prize? Like any, any information about like Canadians that have ever won this? Um, I don't. Okay. Um, I can't think of anybody yet. So, oh, we have, oh, and we have some people in um, the, uh, in the form. So this is fantastic. We have Carvin, um, who didn't quite get the answer in. So room 307, we're hearing from you. Um, so people could be recognized for the great things they have done. Oh, that's, that's a great, a great reason. And absolutely as well. That's right. Anyone that has uh, done something amazing for peace, um, can be their names can be put forward to actually uh, see whether or not they can win that year. So there's a lot of people that obviously could be recognized. And we were uh, talking about our Canadian one, just uh, just having that there as well. Um, believe it or not, and maybe some of our students know this as well, but um, our Canadian, the only Canadian to ever have won the Peace Prize, so one person in the whole time that it's been around, and it was invented, it was uh, created in uh, 1901. So it's been going on for over 120 years. So the person that won was one of our prime ministers. It was Lester B. Pearson, who was the prime minister in 1956, and he um, helped stop the Suez uh, um, crisis that was going on down on the Suez Canal. There was a war that was about to be about to start, and he was the one that defused the war and stopped it from happening. So I'm going to lean in. We have G6s, so one of the, the groups. Um, they were on track because they said reward people so they are re remembered and world peace. Um, Sania says, I don't know, possibly to give awards to deserve things. So there you go. You're on the right track. Um, Mrs. McCart's class says to encourage others to ask peacefully. Oh, nice. Oh, those are great. So totally on track. And then uh, Corbin and Francesca said there might have been a group, a big group of people who wanted to share ideas about peace. Maybe someone wanted to create something to show peace. So I love that everyone who has joined us are coming out with great, great answers and mm -hmm. all on the right track on that one. So thanks. <laughs> Yeah, and believe it or not, we'll find this out when we go into Minecraft as well, is that um, Nobel, believe it or not, he was the inventor of dynamite. He created dynamite. So the, the dynamite was used in a whole bunch of places where it was very destructive, like wars and all kinds of things. So there was also a theory that was out there that he created the Peace Prize because he kind of wanted to to leave something to humanity that was actually a good thing instead of you know um, just people that had, had used his, his invention for this. He had over 300 patents for things that he invented. He was pretty cool. He was a pretty neat man. Yeah. <clears throat> All okay. right. So I think if they're in our forum, that's great. Then we know that they're going to be able to um, come in later on and ask questions and everything too. Because believe me, I am a, I say this every single time that I go into Minecraft. I am a professional beginner. So I will be asking for help in certain things. So students, please uh, help me out when I need it. Um, and maybe you'll find things that I can't find. Because I, I go around in these worlds and I'm like, wow. I know it should be there. There should be a way to get to this, but uh, sometimes it takes me a lot to find it. So I'm hoping that some of the students are like me as well. <laughs> and I, I think so, because we have some of our students who are saying, I'm so excited for Minecraft. So I, I really like Sophia, we're going to lean into you. Okay. Sophia answered that she's very excited um, for Minecraft this afternoon. So, um, and I'm sure there are many others. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm just going to tap in uh, Jonathan, a shout out to Jonathan. Al Alfred Noble showed a big interest in social issues and was engaged in prize movement. Nice. He yeah, he was. And just um, later on when we're uh, uh, getting you into Minecraft, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Alfred Nobel as well, because he, he had some pretty neat things that were happening um, in his life. So today we are, we're going to dive right into Active Citizen, the Minecraft world from Active Citizen. We're going to investigate and take a look at four amazing Nobel Pri uh, Peace Prize winners. So none of these ones are Lester B. Pearson, unfortunately. That would have been kind of fun to have seen our Canadian Prime Minister in one of these. But we it, that's okay. These are, these are neat people as well. And we're also going to speak to somebody here in Canada. So bringing it right back to our, to our country. Somebody here, a young person who has become an amazing active citizen as well. 
never know. Maybe we'll be we'll be seeing this person uh, go on someday to get a Nobel Peace Prize as well. We just don't know. All right. So let's get into Minecraft, get started right away. And I'm hoping that everybody already has their own login and everything too. So you're gonna log into your account in, in uh, Minecraft. That's your first step there. So make sure you log into your account. Then when you get there, you're gonna go to the new and featured tab that's um, gonna pop up onto your screen. So new and featured. And I think now um, Active Citizen is like the fourth one over. They've been creating other worlds as well, Tammy, getting things ready for Earth Week. Oh, that's week. exciting. Yeah, so Active Citizen is number, I think number four over on the on the top, uh, the top uh, level. And then go in and hit create world so that you start getting that all loaded up. And just to remind everybody, right, this is the page to, to pause at if you need it to get yourself in. If you haven't got the chance, like if you just see that scrolly thing happening and happening and you're not getting into the world, then just pause us and go troubleshoot and come on back in and join us again. Yeah. So be patient. So step one, team, well, not this, log in, log into your, this, <laughs> two, new and featured. Three, choose the active citizen world and then create world. And if for whatever reason it's taking some time, pause us. We'll be That's there for good. you on, on the flip side. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and pause. So um, just while we're waiting, though, uh, the the um, Nobel was a chemist and he was an engineer and he was also a businessman. So he got incredibly rich from all the different inventions and things that he made. And so he never ended up getting married, believe it or not. So he never married. And so he had all this money and he wanted to give back. So he set up the Nobel prizes for all kinds of different things. And there were five categories. So peace was one. You, can you think of any of the others, Tammy? What do you think they might be? Can I wonder if peace, if there's like something with health. Oh, or medicine. Like, absolutely. Like, like a medicine or health piece yep. of it. And we actually had our very first Canadian to win a Nobel uh, Prize was actually in medicine. And that was Banting. He was the gentleman who created insulin. He actually invented insulin. Yeah. Which is, so, and that's that's a personal connection for me because I'm diabetic and, and had been on insulin for a while. So um, I'm, I'm no longer dependent on insulin. So small victory true. for that. But mm -hmm. that was something that brought me through a big stretch of life that I needed that support. So that's huge, amazing. Huge thanks. Yeah. Yeah, 1926 is when he, he got that for you. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, oh, I won't even go into that. This, that's a while ago, that's for sure. Um, there's one also for literature, believe it or not. Even though he was a scientist, he loved literature too and poetry. And there's um, one for physics and there's one for chemistry, which of course makes total sense, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, since 1901. All right. I'm hoping students let us know if any if you're not there, but I think we're ready. I think it's time for us to go and meet Alfred. So you have likely already, if you're already in this screen and you're already looking at where we are at here, I'm gonna make sure that I'm, I've got my mouse in the right spot too. <laughs> the good old mouse, eh? Uh, let's see where I'm going here. Okay. We have a lot of just, just people in the forums um, that is just they're excited they're like i can't wait to start i can't wait to start so um i i know um people are getting getting on track and getting ready wonderful well and you know what my mouse for some reason is not going back to my world and i'm gonna just take two seconds here to make sure to see what's going on with that i'm stuck up in my other my other screen All right. so, yeah i need to have a pause for just a moment okay so no problem i i'm i'm we're back on my screen for a moment so uh, we're just troubleshooting live with you to give Mary a chance to uh, find your mouse. And yeah, well, you know what? I think that my screen actually froze down here, which is wild. I've had it sitting there waiting for um, Alfred for so long. Let me just uh, stop sharing my screen. If you wouldn't mind just putting it back on the other one for just a second, I'm going to stop my screen and I'm just going to come back to it. I'm going to be a second. Yep, okay. Sounds good. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Thanks. So I'm going to just go back into the form. So some of the answers we didn't get to. Um, mm -hmm. So we have Hanny who said, um, I think the Nobel, Nobel Golden Prize was created because probably when someone wins, they get a prize. So that's how I think. Yeah, I guess people do it because I wonder, my big wonder to this is, do people do things expecting the prize or are they just living life 
and doing what they need to do and um, are grateful when they are awarded the prize. So that's my big question. It's a, it's a heavy one. Do you do it for a prize or do you do it and then are appreciative to be um, awarded the prize? Oh, that's neat, eh? I think everybody, I can't imagine that uh, that they, you know, if you won, win one of these awards, it's it's pretty special. I know there was a, um, a lady in 2018, I think it was, it's here in Canada too, and she um, was uh, got one for chemistry. So it was amazing just seeing what her her deal was all about as well. Yeah, so it's it's pretty sweet. All right, I think I'm finally back there now, Tammy. I think I'm ready to go. Okay. I know all our, right. Our students are like going. Okay, let's get rolling here. All right. There we go. Yay! I'm back. This is perfect. All right, let's go meet Alfred. Boy, oh boy, that was craziness. And I'm just gonna hit my. Get rid of, oh, I'm not going to even worry about that right now. I was going to say I'm going to hide and hide my stop sharing, but that's just fine. All right. Welcome to the Nobel Peace Center, where we honor great peacemakers. I'm Alfred Nobel. I invented dynamite, which predates your Minecraft TNT. My invention revolutionized industry, and I use my wealth to create a prize for people who embody curiosity, creativity, and the drive to be useful to others. And you're right, Tim, that's just what our students were saying, right? That's so cool. So are you here to visit the Nobel Peace Center or to participate in the Build Challenge? So as you can see down here in the middle of my screen, we could go into the Build Challenge. And that's an actual area in this world where if you have something that you're passionate about, you can go in and build your own world about that. And then obviously have people come in and, and look at it and do all of that. But today, not a chance we have any time for that, but that is there. And I just want you to realize that it's there ready to go. Today, we're gonna to visit the Nobel Peace Center. So in the exhibit behind me, there stand four past Nobel Peace Prize laureates. Each one has a story to tell. Go on in and learn about each one of their causes and how they greatly impacted society. So I want everybody just to remember, in case that you're new to this, that right here on the right in the, the right hand corner, bottom corner, there's a little book and that's going to be an immersive reader. So if I click on that, then I can have any of these um, things that the, the non-playing um, non characters are showing us, we can have it read to us. So just to remember that that is there and you can have it read in any language that you want as well. So if you go up to the top right when it loaded, um, you would be able to see that. I'm just gonna cancel it for now <laughs> as it keeps loading on me, but that is there for you too, in case you need it to read to you. All right, we're gonna go in behind Alfred and see what's here. Actually, you know what? I just saw some. Yep, I did. Look at that. There's his dynamite, eh? That's great. So that's that was his big invention was, was TNT. And I noticed I was in here the other day as well, and I saw this, and I thought that was so funny. It says dynamite, do not push. But it's a button. There's always buttons. And I'm sorry, but buttons need to be pushed. <laughs> I was going to say, push it. Push the button. Do it. I want to see what happens. I know. And I was hoping that something would blow up. But no, this is the Nobel Peace Center. So no, it's not going to do that anymore. So no, he says, don't. What are you doing? The sign says, don't push. All right, fine and dandy. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and you'll also notice on the side of my screen, on the left-hand side, those are my controls. And if I don't want to see them anymore, um, then I can just hit H and they'll go away as well. So if I don't want them on my screen, I can do that. But if you need them again, you just push H again and you'll know that you're obviously going forward with W. So I am going to take a look here. Oh, do you know who that might be, Tammy? That's Malala Yousafzai. It is. It's Malala. And I love Malala. And I, I love her story. And, and it totally makes sense that she's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Oh, my gosh. Amazing yeah. story. So and I think for her story, I'm just thinking back to what one of our students said. Her story, she never did. Her actions didn't think, she, I doubt she would ever have thought that her actions would have awarded her this prize. Yeah. Ever. No. She did it because of the want, wanting education. Um, 
yeah, in for her community for, our, for everyone. So yeah. sorry, I, I, I interrupted your, your uh, sentence. No, no, no. Don't you worry. Always, always feel free. And what I'm noticing though, and if I'm looking around here, see there's a, a whole display about her as well. And I think we can see the other two on the far side there. And I know there's likely one down that way too. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the button that's in front of these people. We're not actually going to go in and see Malala today because Malala is one of the stories that I know that a lot of people know about um, quite often you will have a chance anytime you want to go back in here and if you want to do this today you go right ahead but we're going to go over to someone else as well now if I'm talking to Malala I'll see that she's going to tell me all about her story and what was going on and happening and then I could start the adventure and if I do that I'm going to go into her world and then I'd be going in and, and talking with her all right so I'm right clicking to talk on my mouse and I'm not going to go and into her whole story right now. I'm going to return to the hub. And that means that I'm going to go back where the other three Nobel laureates are as well. All right. Oh, I don't know if you know this guy over here as well. Do you recognize who that is, Tammy? I don't. Oh, okay. is it Gandhi? Is it Gandhi? Oh, very, very cool. It's, it's the Dalai Lama. So, okay. yeah. It's such an amazing story, this one as well. You will love going into this world and seeing what's there too. He just embodies um, absolutely no pushback. And I can't even imagine living like that, but he will not um, um, react to conflict. So it's amazing how his world works and it's pretty neat. So again, you could go in and see the Dalai Lama as well. Over here, oh look, over here we have um, Nansen, who is a gentleman who actually created passports for people to escape from war countries as well. So that's a neat world to go into too. And today we are going to take a look. Hmm, trees. I don't know how many people already know this name. Maybe we'll see it in our, in our form as well. But we're going to go in with Wangari and take a look at how she actually started planting trees and making a difference in Kenya. So there she is, but I'm going to push the button, right click on that button. I always have to remember not to left click because I blow things up all the time. <laughs> and here, I, here I am with her. So as, as soon as I can see her name, I know then that I'm close enough that she'll be able to tell me what it is that she wants me to do. This is how I remember my home country of Kenya, green and beautiful. Over time, plantations depleted the soil and damaged the ecosystem. There were not enough trees, so the rivers dried up, the soil eroded, and farmers couldn't grow their own crops. I dreamt of restoring the land. And that was her dream. That's That was her idea. So we're going to go in and start the adventure with her. All right, let's go talk to her. And I love that right on the screen it tells us as well, go talk to Wangari Mathe. And so off we go. We're going to go talk to her. I think I see something popping up and down there right beside her. Did you see that, Tim? Yes, yes. Seeking attention. <laughs> yeah, slightly. Eh? We'll find out in a second. All right, here we are. We're talking with her again. When we plant trees, we also plant the seeds of peace and seeds of hope. Let's start by turning this area green and restoring the forest. Plant saplings from this chest beside me onto the mounds of earth. Okay, so there's where I'm going to be planting then. Okay, hit okay. And let's go over to our chest and again, right click, do not left click. I left clicked one time doing this another time. And man, I just, I blew up and I had trees and everything all over the place and my chest was gone. I couldn't do, I had to go back out again and start over. So I'm going to see that in the chest right now, there's some saplings and I need to put them down into my hot bar down here at the bottom. So I'm going to take them, load them up, get all 64 for now. And I'm going to put them into my number one position on my hot bar, just so that I have them um, easily to get. And I'll, I'll click out of the, the chest. And there we go. I'm all set to go. Oh, plant a tree is what it's telling me to do. And if you look on the right hand side of the screen, too, it's, it's showing us what to do with our mouse as well. So if I hit Q, I'm going to drop whatever I have in my hand. And you can see I've got a tree now in my hand. But I also, when I get close enough to the plant, let's get over to here you'll notice that now on the right hand side, it says place or mine. I don't want to mine. So I'm going to right click and place my tree. And voila. They always have one little exercise eh, to start with that's nice and simple. 
So there I was going to say, isn't that nice if planting trees went that quickly? <laughs> I know. Before. Yeah, it's not going to go that quickly in a minute, I'm sure, right? The trees brought life back to this place. Follow the road ahead. There's a greater challenge. Okay, off we go. Oh, and let's follow her. Do, 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 do. Do, whoops. Do, do, do. Oh, I just saw some more trees. Or I saw some more uh, red things over there. We must protect the forest because they help us retain water when it rains and keep our rivers flowing. Keep planting saplings, okay, to restore the forest and restore the river. So it looks like we've got a little planting to go do. Oh, you can see how many we have to plant there. Okay, students, you got that? We got five to go. I can see three right now. So I'm going to head. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, I see all five. Here we go. Oh, and I saw some more in the background. So uh, yeah, so there, that must be another place we're going to eventually, eh? And so you'll notice, um, um, ladies and gentlemen, that if you happen to plant, so right click somewhere else, it won't plant anything. So you do need to be right on the mound. Whoops, see that? Right on the mound and away goes the, the sapling. All right, here's another one. Closer, there we go. You're home over to this sucker. Let's get you in there. Start those trees. I hope everybody in their on their computers right now is having a an easy time doing this as well. There. Oh, and I don't I don't want to take away from anybody's um, gaming, but there's nothing in the chat, so that must mean everyone is engaged in doing what they're what they need to be doing. So <laughs> that is lovely. We don't have any like oh so cool SOS help us out. Oh, good. That's amazing, right? That's perfect. All right. So this water has been restored. Trees are an important part of the ecosystem. Without them, the land suffers greatly. Cross the river to see what lies ahead. Okay. Can do that. <laughs> How do you go across rivers, Tammy? <laughs> Um, usually in a, in a vessel of sorts, um, <laughs> yep. no, not I, the way you're about to, you're about to like, take I am, ride. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to hit my space bar to jump and I'm going to walk. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to keep jumping there. See, I'm swimming. We're good. Oh, very good. Very yeah, good. I made it. Oh, and we're back to Langari. So I crossed the river. Okay. We'll cross the river and talk. To, we're going to talk again. Okay, anybody can dig a hole, sure, and plant a tree. To make sure it survives, though, you have to nurture it, water it, keep at it until it becomes rooted so it can care for itself. I'd like you to meet someone. Hmm. Who do you think we're going to meet? Somebody, I don't know, of like a land keeper, a knowledge keeper of the land. I, don't I like know. that. Let's, let's see. Oh, meet the goat herder. Oh, why do you think we're meeting a goat herder? Oh, I think, I think, oh, okay. So we, we, I think it's, um, because goats and trees kind of hang out nicely together. I know that there are people that rent out their goats if like a field needs to be landscaped, if it's overgrown because goats help the ecosystem that way. And I was oh. just thinking goat, it kind of got me stuck because it said greatest of all time is what's floating through my head, like the goat mm. of blah, blah, blah. But that's not the goat herder that we're looking for right now. Gotcha. So I, um, yeah. I'm just going to pause and I'm just going to say that there's somebody who's asking about the instructions on how to get to the world. Just pause, go back, um, scroll back a little bit and the instructions are there. We left it on the screen, the one, two, three, four. You want to log in um, and, and look for the world if they're still live with us new and featured is where you're going to look and then look for the active citizen world that's right so um hastings f hastings i hope that helped you good and yes and then come join us at, with wangari that's the the world that we've come into absolutely all right well you you knocked that out of the water actually tammy <laughs> where we just came from the goats yes they are actually going to help um okay you're planting new trees the trees here can't grow because the land is covered in brambles and so the goats help clear out the brambles follow me and i'll show you my goats so this is that was that was very cool. So everything has a purpose, right? That's what's amazing. We'll go through their little house. Oh, hi, little boy. <laughs> oh no, my goats have escaped. <laughs> Would you please find them? Use the shepherd's crook to get them moving. Okay, here we go. So if you take a look in your 
uh, down in your hot bar, and sadly mine is being covered for a moment there. Let me just escape for a second. Oh no, I better not. That's okay. I don't want it to freeze again. We'll just have to leave that there. In my hot bar, I have my crook down at the bottom in number two. So I'm going to push number two, and now you see in my hand I have the crook. So I'm going to go find those goats and get them back. So I'm going past the goat herder. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Two. I see three. Look, there's even. Oh. Uh, there's uh, there's one towering over the land way up there right okay let me go get this guy first because this guy at least is is right nearby <laughs> all right and as you can see now on my right hand side there Tim I know I keep putting my hand across as I'm pointing up on my screen it's bad. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Um, it actually says milk so if I right click I'm gonna milk the goat here we go bye see you later and let's see See, it's going over and it's eating the brambles. Beautiful. Okay, so our tree is now going to be, that's one that we can actually plant. All right, we're, ugh, gross. Okay, so, and they, one of the things too that we notice is that if you go near one of the trees that's in brambles, there usually is a goat that's nearby. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get to him in a minute. I'll try to climb and do something there, I'm sure. Here's another brambly tree as well. Oh, 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 just a second. There's a goat up there. There might be something in here. Go explore. Do it. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, there's more steps. Oh, my gosh. I may have done something properly here. That's why I say I'm a professional beginner. I don't know what I'm doing all the time, but I found a goat. Bye, goat. Right click. See you later. Ta -da -da. I suppose I can all follow. All right. I know. Right? Celebration. Yes. Oh, so there's number two. All right. So that, oh, man, oh, man. I don't know about that one. That one's, let's, let's move around here a little bit and see if we can see another plate, another way to get up there. Maybe something in here. Oh, there's a plant. That maybe is his plant. Oh, maybe can you, behind that plant, there seems like a ledge. Are you able to get up on that ledge and go any further, or do you get stuck? Let's see. If I jump, jump, jump. Oh, 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 oh you know what, though? Look, I see white over there. There's a goat. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Like in that enclosure, okay. I see it. I see it. Okay. So that means there has to be a little area to get through to there. There has to be. I'll just keep looking. And please, friends out there, if you have a spot that you know that we can get through, please let us know. Help me out here. Oh, yes. I am looking at the form, Minecrafters, and if you have a solution on how we can get to the towering goat, we want to hear you. You, you will do. get the biggest shout out ever. Um, yeah, if you have another solution on how we get that goat up on that tall tower, we oh. want to know. Ooh. Oh, 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 something through here. Oh, follow the flowers. I feel like um, Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Follow the yellow <laughs> brick road. That was almost like a, oh, there's the Oh, goat. there you go. And I think that was the one that you saw before when you were jumping. When I jumped, right? Yeah, I think you're right. That's the jumper. Oh, and look, now now there's a spot for him to get out. That wasn't there before for me to be able to follow him. That's too funny. All right. Oh, oh, oh there's more flowers this way. I'm going to follow the flowers. Oh, this goes into something. Oh, it goes, it goes dark. <laughs> it goes oh, dark. it's, yeah. <gasps> Is that another Are way? Those is that white over there again? Oh, I feel like there are stairs. I would follow that light. Okay. Okay. Oh dear, 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 dear. All right. I have to jump and walk at the same time. Jump. Woo! It worked. <laughs> I better move forward a little bit to get to this next one. Let's see. Jump and walk. Jump. Oh no. I didn't make it. How do I get back out? Oh, oh this, yeah. I was going to say that looks like steps out. <sighs> Okay, back up to here. I can do this, right? Yes. yes. I tell my students all the time, you can do hard things. We can do it. Okay, I'm going to try again. Here I go. Walk and jump. Excellent. Okay, move to the front. Oh, no, I went into the water again. Can I jump up anyways? Oh, and I see the goat. 
Oh, I no. Even... Oh, yes, you're right. I see it up there. Okay, this is it. Last time I got to make it because, uh, yeah, as we say, you know, as you're going along doing all these kind of things, right? It's like, how much time do you have <laughs> during the day? All right, we can do this. This is going to happen. I'm going to get lined up. Let's back over this way a bit and go forward a bit because I can see the end of the block there. I just don't want to fall in the water. All right, jump. Oh my gosh. Oh, Tammy, this is maddening. Okay, no worries. Oh, I bet you that goat on the tower is like, see, that's why I'm the greatest of all time standing here on the tower. Um, and I'm checking our form to see if any friends have any um, suggestions for us. Not yet. I wonder if they're hunting goats in a different way. They might be. And that would be wonderful if we can see how that works as well. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You know what? This is not good. And I appreciate this for anybody. I'm going to do a cheat just for myself right now, just so that we don't um, stay in this water forever. I'm going to escape for a moment. I am going to now hide that because I can. <laughs> I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to just for a moment go to creative mode so that I can do a little flying. And that's the way that as a beginner for me, it saves me from being totally frustrated and, and having a horrible, horrible time. So I'm going to go back. So the here I'm not I am not going to call that a cheat. I'm going to nope. call that a, like a, just a creative solution. Oh, well, thank you. I yep. like that idea. Okay, I'm going to go back over to where I was on ground again. And it's so dark in here. What's happening? Oh, yeah, it did get very oh, dark. It did. It got there very dark. Go. So I'm going to double click. Now, if you look at my space bar, or look at my inventory on the, or my controls on the left, I can double click my space bar and I can fly. And so I'm going to move forward. <laughs> And I'll, I'll drop back down now. I promise. I'm, I'm not flying anymore. But that got me across the water. I just needed it just for today. And I feel like flying should always just be there. Do you? Always, yeah. yeah, it should always just be an option. You know, there's lots of people that, that uh, can do this beautifully. And I just find that it's one of those things there. Go where you go. Yay. Now I can follow it down. Ha, ha, ha. So there. Well, Tammy, I know I have one more goat. Oh, that's the one that we just, he's hes off and, and running now. Where's our other goat? Do you see it? No, not yet. I saw the ones in um, that were herded. Oh, maybe on the right turn, right, 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 right behind you. Oh, right up there. There she be. Oh, look at that. All right. Ha, ha, ha. So I know that I could go get this goat, no trouble whatsoever, by just um, doing my fly thing, right? I can double click my space bar, and now I'm flying again, and I can get over to it. But if I go a little bit higher, I think I can see the way that I would likely get over to it. Like, look, right there, see? That part of the ground would come up over to here, and I could have gotten right over to it. So I know that I could have gotten to this one uh, quite easily as well. But I'll just, because I'm already right here, We'll just get this goat. Where you go? Yay! And awesome. Well yeah. done, Mary. And well, well done, like to all of everyone who is is. I know everyone is busy because they're not in the form. Um, <laughs> congratulations if you have found all of your goats, or if you're finding and working on all of those goats. Well done. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, and there we go. The goat got the brambles off of it and it's all set. So now I have to now plant some more trees. So I'm going to go okay. back to my hot bar and, and, whoops, and click on number one again. And that's giving me back my trees, my saplings. And so away we go. This is great. So let's get this in here. There's one. Oh, there's definitely another one. Do, 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 do. Plant and there's five to plant. Remember, we saw them all as we were going along here. And what one. I love about this is I wonder if any of, of the classes that have joined us and learners who have joined us, what kind of planting they do, because it's spring right now. And we're usually that's in, in Canada. That's when we start oh. saplings and seedlings to plant. So think about what kind of planting do you do, um, I guess, in your community? Yeah. Perhaps you plant at school, with the, perhaps you plant at home, perhaps you've never planted. Maybe it's something you'd like to do, a goal for yourself. Well, and you know, it's interesting. I'm just flying because I'm going to fly. Oh, there's the other one. I was, I was pretty darn close to it. And that's the kind of neat thing about flying that I like is that, you know, sometimes it's just nice just to, 
um, to not have to take that extra time to go around the building to find something. Oh, cool. Oh, look, look at, at it grow. Yeah. We definitely did it. Okay. When the land is overtaken by destructive plants, the beneficial plants can't grow. So we must work to maintain the land so it doesn't fall into ruin. And that totally makes sense, right? You've got to keep it cleared in order for those real, the good roots to actually get going. So here we are following her again. And I'm just watching our time there too, because I know we have our special guests coming to us as well. But I really did want to try and get that one goat. And I, I, I'll try again the next time for sure. But you can't protect the environment unless you empower the people. And that's been the big thing for Wangari was the fact that she actually got everyone realizing that this is what they needed to do to make everything work. So let's find out what the village needs. And I'm work, going this way. And I notice that every person that I come to is going to be able to tell me something. So this villager said it was so lush here before the English created their plantations. So that was what ended up happening. Even the little children have, have things to say. I'm so hungry all the time. Oh, what a shame. So if I look around and I see all the different people that are here, all the villagers, our daily lives depend on the health of our land. So you can click on any one of those people to find out what they have to say. And if we look around, I think now, oh, look, there's somebody with a chest. I know that that means that we have to go talk to them for sure. So we need the water to reach the farms, but the pipes are incomplete. Oh, okay. Where should the pipes go? The connecting pieces are in these chests. Oh, there's more than one chest there, Tammy. But we okay. we use. Okay, so let's go. Well, we know we've got one chest right here. Let's right click that sucker and see what it has inside. Oh, cool. It's got pipes. So oh, we have red and green and just red. And just red. Okay. And I wonder. There they are. We'll put them down into our hot bar as well. Uh, close that up. Um, okay. So, oh, well, there's green right there. May as well, should we put one in? Oh, we don't have plain green. Okay. So we do need to find some more chests. Um, okay. Let's take a look around. Oh, I see somebody, I think, way over there. And oh, I think I see a chest with, oh, yeah. and there's purpley blue. Yeah, so that means we definitely need some more of these guys, right? I'm just going to go right to the chest today because I think it's likely, yep, got things inside of it too. And there's our blue, right? So yeah. There we go. There's blue. Oh, I only got three at the moment. That's, we'll give them a few more there. And what color? Are the Oh, blue and green. Okay. Perfect. Um... All right. Well, let's uh, let's see what we need then. Okay. So let's follow one of these pipes. Oh, there's a there's a hole. All right. So what we should put into there, I guess, eh, is some of the blue ones. Yeah, that's that would be my guess. All right. So I'm going to put blue in my hand. So number three on my hot bar. Right click to place. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I think we did something right. Oh, well, look at that! And it's just it's almost like it's flowing all that's the amazing okay friends i think you see what to do here too all right i'm gonna get number four on mine which is blue and green plunk that sucker in there i like it i gotta stop using my word sucker don't i <laughs> 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 love it oh cool all right let's roll here oh i see a red one and we have full red don't we number two. yes we do i love it Let's put that in there. Nice. Maybe when we're doing this aerial view, we might see some of the other holes. As well. Yep, I just saw a green one over, ooh, which direction? This direction, right there. Okay, we have, oh, we don't have all green. We don't have a, um, a block. Oh, no, we don't. So that means we have another chest somewhere. Is this somebody up here? Or do we see this person already? I think we saw that villager already. Okay, let's look. Oh, I see somebody else. And they're wearing green. So do you think maybe they have the green pipes? Oh, you're very smart. That could very well be. Let's check it and see. Ha ha ha. Yes, there we are. We got some green now. Okay, perfect. All right, then let's get back to the green one. It's number five on mine. Plunk that one in. 
looking for another hole. Oh, I see a red and a red and green one. Yes, I see that one too. Right here, right? Yes. Excellent. Let's put that in number one. There it goes. Okay, keep watching. Ding, 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 ding. I didn't see another one, but I know we haven't got it done or else we likely would have the water flowing, right? So we must be, oh, there's a green one. Let's get the green one in there. Uh, green is five. Amazing. And oh, there must still be a hole oh. somewhere. <gasps> no, 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 oh, no. Look at the vegetation just happened. Yay. All right. So the village farm is restored and you taught the people how to care for their land. Because of your work, the this place will be green for generations. Little by little, we can make the world green. Uh, that's so cool. So if you wanted to right now, um, uh, any of the students out there, if you want to stay and take a look around and do things, that's great as well. Again, you can pause us and come back. We're going to return to the, the Nobel Peace Center because we need to actually um, talk a little bit about the center and then come and meet our Canadian active citizen as well. And so if I get in here, there we are, we're back. Do you notice something on this far wall there, Tammy? Oh, I see something is lit up the top left hand corner. Yeah. And I haven't done all four worlds, but I have this funny feeling that if all four of these are lit up, if you go and do all the four different worlds, maybe there's something that's going to be behind that wall. And I can leave that with everybody to try and figure out because I haven't gone in there. I haven't done all four worlds all at once. So that would be interesting as well. So as you know, all the other worlds are still here. We can go back out and see Nobel as well. But for today, we're going to actually say goodbye to our laureates. And we'll just turn around there. There's Malala still standing there too. And we'll go back out, I think, to your screen again now too, Tammy. And we have somebody that we want to meet. <laughs> There's our mission accomplished. Excellent. So we, um, as you're still maybe going through and playing and doing, um, and we're going to talk to someone today who actually uh, became an active citizen when he was around your age. And so this is why we wanted to, uh, to make sure that uh, you were able to um, meet somebody that could inspire you because you right now are here thinking that you might like to be an active citizen. And maybe there's something that is just really, um, really, really close to your heart that you'd like to try. And you just think, oh, well, you know, that, I can't do that. But you'll, when you listen to Abby and hear him talking, I think you're going to see that you definitely can do things as well. So I think, Tammy, do we have Abby ready with us as well? Oh, there you are. Hello. Hi, Mary. Wonderful to see you again. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's a great day today. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So I was just telling the students that uh, that your story is pretty inspiring and it might just be something that will click for them today, too, as they listen to hear what it is that uh, you can share with us, too. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us how you got started on all of this? Absolutely. Yeah. Great to be here with everyone. My name is Abe. I'm a third year student at the University of Toronto. I'm from Surrey, B.C., uh, and my story really started when I was young. I grew up in BC, really becoming connected with nature. Uh, if you think about BC, you got the water on one side, you have the mountains on the other, and the forest in the middle. And so my earliest memories of me as a young person was me going out in nature, me being with nature, me going on these awesome walks. And I think that really strengthened my connection with the environment, but also the people that are connected to the environment. And so uh, fast forward up to high school, when I was 14 years old, I had this amazing opportunity to travel to the Canadian Arctic. And so I was on an expedition with 200 people from around the world. Uh, and on this expedition, I really had the chance to see the impacts of climate change firsthand. So from glaciers melting in front of my eyes to seeing polar bears. But really what struck me was learning from people from the Arctic. So learning from my Inuit friends in the Arctic. And so the Inuit are indigenous to the Arctic. And my friends talked about how their communities have been experiencing the impacts of climate change for the past 20, 30 years. 
And that was really shocking to me because growing up in Canada, I never heard about these impacts. And so that's really how I started with Break the Divide. The idea was just to connect youth at my high school with students in Arctic communities so we could collectively talk about our local experiences with climate change. And what started as a small project grew very quickly, very fast. It did, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. So when the when the project, when you first um, came back from the Arctic, that was when you were inspired to think, oh my gosh, I want to stay in touch with these people and, and be able to talk about these issues. And, and you'd seen these things firsthand yourself, right? So how did you actually get things started? Like what, what happened with uh, when you got yeah. back home? Absolutely. I th and I think this is the really important thing when you're when you have an idea or when you want to start a new project. I talked to my friends and my family and my teachers about the idea that I had mine. I realized that one of the things that I really wanted to do was have my friends understand the experience that I had had in the Arctic. But they weren't able to travel to the Arctic just like I had. So I thought, well, what is another way we could do this? And we started using video calls. You know, we all use video calls nowadays. But back in 2016, it wasn't as common. And so to get started, I talked to my older brother. I talked to my high school teachers. And they came up, they helped me come up with the idea of doing video calls between my high school and the school in the Arctic. And the rest was just sending some emails out here and there coordinating between the different schools, getting a club set up at the school in the Arctic and getting a club set up in my own high school. And so there were a lot of little pieces along the way where I talked to, again, people that had already been where I was. And by learning from them, it made the process a lot more tangible and easier um, by breaking it down into smaller chunks that I could easily tackle. Right. And I think that that happens a lot for everyone is that you in your mind, you think, oh, it could do this and it could do this and it could do this. But to concentrate on just one little piece at a time is so important. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I, I think with Break the Divide, again, the thing is I, I and my team, we always have this big vision. And so the lesson is not to not think big. You should absolutely dream big and have a great vision. But in order to get started, you need to start local. And you need to start small. And I think by focusing on that while writing down your vision and keeping that in mind, that gives you a goal to pursue, but it allows you to work small steps to get to that point. Right. And there's there's definitely um, there's even um, um, I don't want don't want to say institutions, but there are groups that can actually help with you doing these sort of things as well, right? Like how did you um, get your website set up and how did you get the equipment to to start doing all of this? Like how did that all come about? For sure. Yeah. I, I think, again, one of the big things there was just talking to different people. So one of the things that I learned when I was in high school was to talk to your ideas about a lot of people because you never know what sorts of help people can offer. And so uh, I remember talking to, um, again, one of my high school teachers about just this idea that I had. And they told me that their friend helped design websites and they could do it at a really they could help us design the website. And so I started by designing the website myself. I watched a few YouTube videos on how to figure it out. And yeah. then I had this professional just take a look and make some edits. And so, you know, that's one of those things where, again, by taking the initiative and by showing that I was already interested, other people could sense that passion and other people wanted to get involved too. And I think that's the really big thing there. If you're passionate about something and genuinely do care about the work that you're doing, other people will be able to see that. And so it's really about finding out what that passion is connecting with it because your story will come through automatically when you're sharing your passion. No, oh, I, I totally agree with that completely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Abby, you've been saying that uh, this has grown for you because other schools have started to become part of this uh, this this talk, right? Yeah. So our, our students that are out here now are between grade four and grade eight for the most part. And some of their teachers are here with us as well. Um, is there a way that they can actually reach out to to talk with you or to, to see what they could do about, uh, I know it's not maybe their passion yeah. project, but can their passion project um, happen through what you're doing as well? Absolutely. And so what started as this small connection between one high school in BC and one in the North to break the divide just about climate change has now turned into global connections about all sorts of issues. So we'll have youth uh, from Saudi Arabia talking to youth in Taiwan, kids in Bolivia talking to kids in Ukraine, um, you know, students from all over the world talking to each other and sharing experiences, not only about climate change, but about issues like mental health, reconciliation, gender equality, uh, infrastructure, whatever issue you care about. 
by applying our model of turning apathy or anxiety or disconnect about an issue into empathy and doing that through conversation. And then we work with you to help turn that newfound empathy, that rapport, that trust, that friendship that you've built between these two communities into action projects, into local action projects. So a model of going from disconnect to connection or empathy and taking that empathy to action, uh, that's something that can apply to any issue that you want to care about. And so for any teachers or students that are interested, if you care about climate change, if you care about mental health, if you care about any issue, we can connect you with another community in a different part of the world or country that also cares about that issue. And by learning about different perspectives, we can get people connected, we can get conversations going, and we can share perspectives to drive local action. And so uh, for any teachers or students, you can definitely reach out to us. Um, you can check out our website at breakthedivide.net. Uh, you can email me directly at abe at breakthedivide.net. Uh, and we can get your school, your high school, your middle school, um, your elementary school, uh, as a part of our network and involved in these sorts of connections, just so we can break these divisions that exist in society. Oh, I wish we could just stop right there. That was like just perfect. But maybe maybe Tammy can actually put up a, um, um, a header as well. And I, I meant to say too, that students, if you have any questions, uh, Tammy can be watching the forum. So please um, make sure if you have any questions at all, add them into the, the forum and we, we can try and, and see if Abby can answer one of those as well. Thanks, yeah. Tammy. She's in the background there doing her amazing job back there too. So yeah, if you have any any uh, questions at all, then please, please put them in there. Um, I think one of the things, the reason why this is really important to me to, to, to correlate um, and bring in active citizen world from Minecraft and look at these Nobel Peace Prize winners. Um, I think Tammy and I were talking earlier and Tammy said um, that Malala never ever thought that you know what she was doing was ever going to be acknowledged by anybody, let alone be a Nobel Peace, um, Peace Prize winner, right? Um, I think that's the big thing is that you're doing these things because that's part of what you feel needs to be done, right? And, and I know that that's the way that you're feeling as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, again, it starts with passion. It starts with caring about an issue. If you care about art or music, use art and music to apply that to an issue that you care about. If you're really big on storytelling or writing, use that skill. The point is, there is no set way to make change. And by involving your own passions and ingraining those, those passions into the work that you want to be doing, you can make a difference. And it's actually those really interesting connections between different fields that allows us to create new things. Um, I recently heard a quote about how, you know, excellence is hitting a target that other people can't hit. But brilliance is when you hit a target that other people can't even see. And so I think when it starts with being an active citizen, it's about thinking of ways that you can challenge what already exists and use what you already care about to create a difference in potentially a new way. Absolutely. I think of some of the stories that I researched as we were looking into having somebody as a guest speaker. Um, there was a, a young lady down in Nova Scotia who in grade six, she yeah. uh, couldn't go swimming in her local river. And so as a science project um, for school, she actually tested the water and it turned into the fact that there were companies that were dumping all kinds of things into that river and mm -hmm. all sorts of things came from it. You know, we right here in my, my school board in Quarter Pine Ridge, we had a young lady who um, who was just um, um, making blankets for cancer patients. Uh, and she noticed that, you know, or no, sorry, not, not blankets, um, uh, little stuffed toys that yeah. just to give somebody something to hang on to, you know. Other people, they, they noticed that people just needed a sandwich. So I think we have things coming up, don't we? Like um, even Earth Week, going out and just, instead of just doing it because your class is doing it uh, and going and picking up garbage, Take a look around and see how you can be an active citizen. And I think, um, Tammy, do we have any questions specifically for Abby? She's in the background there. If we don't, then what I'd like to close with is uh, the question of what can you do um, as a student? What can you do to become a more active citizen? And Abby, maybe I don't know if you have something that you want to finish sharing with us, then that would be great as well. Any last words? I, I love I, I love your the your um your tag for your uh, for your project is empathy into action. And I love that because that really is it. You feel passionate about something, now go do it. Yeah. And I think that's exactly it. To become an active citizen, start with empathy. Empathy is 
the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And you achieve that by talking to other people. So I think the communities that you want to serve with, I think it starts with thinking about what communities you serve, what communities are you a part of? Is it your local community? Is it your national community that you feel connected to? And again, ingrain your passion there, connect with the people that are most affected by the issues that you care about. And again, it, this can be very overwhelming to think of the big issues. So start small and then ingrain your passions and then use that empathy that you've now found to turn that into action. That's how you become an active citizen. It's one step at a time. And really more than anything else, it feels good to be an active citizen. It feels good to be involved. And if you have the capacity to do so, uh, we are happy to support you at Break the Divide in order to become an active citizen. And I think by being at places like this, you learn a lot about how you can become an active citizen. So I, I think that I'll end with that. Really, it's about empathy. It's about action. And it's about community. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you coming on and uh, and uh, good luck with everything that's going on. And, and wouldn't it be amazing if some of these uh, classes do reach out and are able to um, to add um, to keep on breaking that divide? That'd be Absolutely. wonderful to see. All thank right. You. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. All right, and just for everybody, just so that we, because uh, we have to finish off, it's that time already, it's crazy. But do remember, like we're asking you, do have chats with, um, with, your, with your, um, your classroom, with everybody else in your class. What, uh, you know, what can you do to be a more active citizen? And again, if you wanna go back into the Minecraft world, Build that world if you want to inside the, the Nobel Peace Center there. Go back in and check out what Malala is doing and, and what uh, what the Dalai Lama, how he envisions um, how peace works. It's just, it's a really neat world to be going into. And we want to thank Minecraft and thank Cobblestone as well for, for this. And Tammy, thank you very much for being here with me today too. It Have was lovely ex exploring with you today. And Sounds thanks good. to the Minecrafters. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.